And the streak did not end, Reed. Speaking of grown men about to cry, Reed, you 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 took it like a G, the, the Broncos meltdown. I knew it was gonna happen. I knew it was coming. The yeah. script is written. Yeah. It Cowboy Reed, Broncos fan here, he said it before it happened. He goes, it's gonna be blocked. Yep. That's two we're two. We did both we've done that. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, I know how this ends. And it and it was. And a streak can be very real because they have not won there since 2015. Did I see that? I think that's right. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's the stuff that seeps into your head when you're driving five and a half minutes and, you know, it's perfect. It's laid out. It's over, right? And then Chanel, who Spag said, strong as an ox, strongest guy on the team, making a huge play on special teams. Great teams find different ways to win in the NFL. Great teams find different ways to win. It's not all style points. This team is undefeated. And you look at them, they got a big, big tilt with the Bills this week. Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Browns, Texans, Steelers, Broncos. Now, here's what's interesting, Cowboy. If they run the table, which, you know, the Bills game's huge. I think the Chargers game's no, no walk in the park. Um, plus, the way they play, they can lose any game, right? Because they sometimes they play down for a while. Um, but if they're undefeated at the end of the season, wouldn't it be interesting? And we've seen it before, basically, but with um you know being undefeated and then playing the broncos january 5th probably resting starters mm -hmm. so uh you can play spoiler at the very play least spoiler. and probably play to get into the playoffs hopefully exactly. for y'all exactly. but they might not want that team in the playoffs right. as i'm talking it out yeah, yeah, yeah you know like that might be one of those situations where you're like i don't I know i even have a chance to see because that team matches up pretty well really well they it's really do life. so yeah. no i mean fuck i I, I'm not going to say – I'm going to save some of the analysis for tomorrow, but um, Mahomes missed some throws. He missed Worthy, missed Kelsey in the end zone, and I'm not dismissing that stuff. He's had issues this year, relatively uh, speaking. But um, in this week's edition of Mahomes being absolutely motherfucking inevitable, twin third and 13s, the one to P. Ryan, where it's like he's got Vaseline on his shoulder pads. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, he's like a spitball pitcher. Yeah. Bro, it's um he breaks the pocket, uh hits P Ryan. The other one, he had another uh, third and 13 to D hop. A little flick of the wrist. Um, and every big moment, Kelsey. Every big moment, fourth and goal, sticks, third and four, whatever it is. When you have D hop and he takes the best cover guy, you know. Kelsey's, I mean, like against a defense like that, there's going to be matchups that he likes. And there were matchups today. That I'm like, damn, that's a good matchup for Kelsey. So um, definitely, definitely helps having another guy in D hop who was a big part of this game. And I love watching him and Pat Sertan battle. That's like two alphas, absolute alphas, corner, wide receiver, two of the most p competitive damn positions on the team in the league. And when guys are competitors like those two, it brings something out in both of them. Did you see that? I haven't seen Pat Sertan. Pat Sertan plays his ass off. He locks everybody down. But I haven't seen him that interested in beating somebody's ass as he was today. It's like Devontae Adams a yeah. year ago. He was. I fear God. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I fear God, homie. So throws him out of bounds, the whole thing. Like, they're going back and forth. Um, and, and, and I just thought, like, on the other side, Cortland Sutton, who really in some big spots, got the best of Trent McDuffie just in a couple spots. Yeah. Um, but the one thing he's going to want back is the drop at the end of the half. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he had him set up for the game winning field goal man manned up, mm -hmm. you know, he got open, um, but he's going to want that little, little stretch back. Mm -hmm. And Bo Nix played well, man. Like when you're completing the ball to eight, nine different guys in the first half in the game, you know, first nine completions, seven different guys or whatever it was, whatever the graphic was, it's a testament to his development right now. And it's also a, a testament to Sean Payton's a bad boy. Sean Payton is a bad boy. I mean, Spag is a great D coordinator. And for multiple drives in the first half, they were just chunking them. Perimeter stuff, run game, you know, just stretching the, stretching the zones out, stretching the defense out, and then dumping it underneath, clearing people out. He just knows how to get people open and play the numbers game and the run game and the whole thing. So this is a group that will continue to get better. You know, you guys can be excited about that. But Bo Nix has to learn not to run straight backwards when he sees pressure up the middle or on the edge. 
You know, there was one condensed formation that they brought edge pressure on early in the game. And he just runs backwards, 17 yard loss. So, you know, and you talked about the one where you might kick a field goal, if not for a big loss. Um, but I thought Bo Nix did some good things. And I thought the Chiefs did a really good job on him as a runner. I think Spags told him, hey, when you get free, this guy likes to bail. Keep running. Don't slow down. He's going to run straight backwards. He's going to get himself into trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you watch Uzama, I think it was, um, play the the quarterback option um, late in the game. 97. What the hell is he at? Yeah, Uzama. When he played the option late in the game, uh, he just did a great job. It's like they're just well coached. Well coached. Heated him up in the second half. Chiefs know how to win, man. Chiefs know how to win. So um, the streak is still alive. I hate to tell you that, Reed. Mahomes, that's a bad boy, including dragging Cooper on the side on the yeah. sideline to get to fourth and one. He's just a bad boy, dude. He's just a bad boy. Like people might hate it, but the guy's just a badass. And for people online who saw some video of Mahomes on a hot mic saying, hey, can you tell me if he's getting close and framed it as asking the official, this is a real thing that happened this afternoon. Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes asked an official to warn him when a guy's about to hit him. That's the way it's framed. Do you think critically ever? Like, do you ever think things out to their logical end? Are you, are you saying that you believe it's possible that Patrick Mahomes is asking a referee to tell, to, to basically, like, when O linemen get beat, they say, look out. You know, they'll yell, like, I beat a guy, and they're here, throw it. You think the ref, you think he's asking out loud, what kind of a, the Super Bowl is played in a fucking hangar situation do you think this is? I mean, honestly, he's, he's getting them to warn him about a tackle being too far back, probably. Not everything is a damn football conspiracy.